decades from now, in the high-rise metropolis of Atlas City, a single spirit haunts its streets, avenging the souls of those taken before their time. Her name is Jane, a once lost soul, now serves as emissary for death itself, bringing an unrelenting justice to all who transgress the natural order. We find our spirit walking the field of Atlas Memorial Cemetery on a cold, cloudy autumn afternoon. As she passes each headstone, Jane can hear a small child crying next to an old, unattended grave. Are you all right? I miss my mom and dad. Is this their grave? No. The little girl points to the headstone. The grave is hers. I see. Is your name Scarlet? Yes. Looks like you've been here for a while, haven't you? Yeah. How come? I'm, I'm waiting for my mom and dad. Do they visit you? Yeah, they come here every year on my birthday, and the other day. I try to talk to them, but they can't hear me. They never hear me. They're really old now. It's tough seeing them like that, I know. But you don't have to stay here. You know that, right? But I have to. They need me. I know you think that. They would never want this for you. What do you mean? Your parents want you to be happy. Trust me on this. And if they knew you've been here this whole time, it would break their hearts. But if I go, I won't be able to see them anymore. Of course you will. But when? In time. That's what the lady in black said. She's not wrong. But I'm scared. Scared of what? I don't know. It's okay to be scared, sweetie. But I promise you, you're gonna be safe. How do you know? Because the Lady in Black is my friend, and I trust her. You can too. You promise? I promise. Now come with me. She's been waiting for you. The two spirits walk hand in hand towards the archway of the cemetery. Standing at the entrance is a woman dressed in a long, black, flowing cloak. She smiles as Jane and the little girl approach. Hello, my dear. Are you ready? Yeah. She's a little scared, but she's ready. There is nothing to fear, my love. Everything will be all right. All you have to do is take my hand. The little girl looks at Death's hand then up at Jane. It's okay. Can you tell my mom and my dad that I love them? They already know. And tonight, they will have a wonderful dream about me. Really? Yes. Okay. The little girl takes Death's hand as the two vanish with a gust of wind. Jane smiles as she patiently waits. Thank you for that. Don't mention it. For 20 years, I would visit her here. And every time she would beg me to stay just a little longer. Why didn't you just take her? I didn't have the heart. She needed to make that choice for herself. <sighs> it's hard to let go sometimes. You saved her, Jane. You should be proud. I am. Is something wrong? I haven't been here in years. Forgot how depressing it gets. I used to want to get cremated, but the thought of coming back as a zombie was just too tempting. Was that supposed to be a joke? Was it funny? <laughs> it was terrible. Jane, does the name Lucy mean anything to you? Should it? She was before you, my former emissary. But something happened. Yes. What? Lucy had a lot of anger, and it inevitably consumed her. I tried to reason with her. I tried to warn her that her rage would infest her spirit. 
darken her soul, but she wouldn't listen. Eventually, it all came to a head, and I was forced to reap her. But she used a warding spell against me and slipped away. I haven't seen her since. And that was 54 years ago. A warding spell? Yes. Lucy liked to read. A lot. And there is a book for everything. Why are you telling me this? Because she is the one who kidnapped your mother's soul from the afterlife. That doesn't make sense. Why would she do that? I wish I knew. But you asked me to find out. This is what I've learned. Where is she now? I don't know. But wherever it is, it will be heavily protected against me. I need to know what I'm up against. Tell me everything you know about Lucy. Later on, on the outskirts of Atlas City, in a run-down, abandoned shipping yard near the waterfront, a dilapidated warehouse stands among the decay of the forgotten industrial site. Decrepit boards creak and rattle as the hollow winds whistle throughout the rotting structure. All is eerily silent as Jane slowly enters. Looking around the condemned edifice, she notices dozens of Celtic markings painted all over the walls. As Jane contemplates her next move, a voice calls out to her. You shouldn't be here. You shouldn't have taken my mother. Is that what this is about? What do you think? The spirit of Lucy materializes before Jane, propped up on the hood of an old, junked car. I think you're an over-your-head kid, but I'm intrigued. How did you find me? This place is heavily warded. If you go outside, you risk being seen and caught. And we mostly haunt places that have meaning to us. Before this land was sold to a developer, it used to be a residential area. Your home, right? Clever girl. So, what's your plan then? Convince me to give up? Come with you and what? Cross over? Yep. And why would I want to do that? Because it beats the alternative? Which is? I kick your ass, and then drag you out of here for judgment. So I'm gonna say this just once. Please, come with me and you'll at least have a chance at redemption. Redemption? Yes. Lucy hops off the car and approaches Jane. You really think so? It's a possibility. I always assumed it was too late for me, you know? It's never too late, Lucy. Please, just take my hand and let's walk out of here. Just like that? Just like that. Jane holds out her hand. Lucy looks down at it, then back up with a devilish smile. <laughs> Are you serious? I mean, really? Did you honestly think it was going to go down like that? I'm trying to help you. I don't need your help. Uh, you're asking for it. Oh, am I? With all her might, Jane charges Lucy and tackles her to the ground. Ah! It's over, Lucy. Give it up. Is that the best you've got? Because <laughs> if it is, you're in for a big surprise. Lucy lets out a maniacal laugh as a behemoth masked figure emerges from the shadows, clutching a crowbar in his hands. As the brute approaches the two spirits, the man pulls back and strikes the iron rod at Jane. Did you know that with the right amount of focus, we have the ability to control some of the more simple-minded? Oh, and that iron? It hurts like a bitch. <laughs> I found Gerald locked away in the asylum. Killed his whole family when he was just a boy. Hasn't spoken a word since. Doctors feared he was beyond reproach. But I took one look at his physique and I knew right away he had nothing but untapped potential. And the best part, he's not afraid to get his hands dirty. <coughs> you see, I like it here, Jane. I like what I've become and I don't need anyone to redeem me. Gerald, salt please. Gerald drops his iron crowbar as he pulls a box of salt out from his overcoat, then begins to pour it in a circle around Jane, trapping her inside. Lucy, please! And now it's time to cleanse this house of some negative energy. Gerald, 
Book, please. The masked brute walks over to the junked car and pulls out an old book of spells. He then turns and brings it back to Lucy. You ever witnessed an exorcism before? No. With a sinister smile, Lucy opens the book and begins to read the supernatural incantation. O oh, spiritus mali, upni non dominant, eternum purgatorium resident, portal of it in the great. No, please. No, Lucy, no! Bye-bye, bitch. To be continued.